Hey there, so you're thinking about becoming an audiobook narrator. Why? It's like you sit in a room and talk to yourself for a really long time. Well, that's what I'm going to cover. This video is going to be completely about the equipment and what you need physically to be able to record an audiobook. Because, I mean, I'm sure if you've ever considered it, you were sitting around and you were like, thinking to yourself, self, if I were going to narrate an audiobook, what would I need? Let's start off with the basics, all right? You need a space to record in, a microphone to capture the sound, a computer to record it on, and a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, in order to record good quality sound and audio. So, let's start off with space. You need a sound-treated space that's not going to have a lot of reverb or bouncing off the walls and echo into your mic. So what you can do to start out with, and what a lot of people start with, is a closet, okay? It's a nice small area. Uh, generally, there's clothes in there, and then you can even hang up some comforters or blankets or moving blankets or acoustic blankets like these uh, to help reduce that amount of reverb, kind of deaden the room, they call it. A closet's not going to be soundproof. The only way you're going to get a soundproof room is if you build a soundproof room. Um, mass and a bunch of other factors go into that. That's a more in-depth type thing than what we're going to get into right now. You can also build a PVC booth or just a blanket booth in a quiet part of the house. Uh, these here are acoustic blankets. I forget the manufacturer of these. They're, a little, they're thicker than the... Um, moving blankets that you might get at Harbor Freight or whatever. Um, they seem to work really well. Uh, they do reduce noise a little bit, but it's nothing, you know, if a car goes by, honks its horn, it's going to catch it, leaf blowers, dogs barking, stuff like that. It's not soundproof. Neither of those little foam squares you put on the wall that you can order from Amazon or whatever, that's sound treatment, not soundproofing, no matter what it says on the Amazon ad. All right. Then... You can move up to like a whisper room, which is also not completely soundproof. It does reduce a lot of sound, exterior sound, but it still isn't soundproof. Uh, moving on up from that, you could build a soundproof booth or studio. On to the next item. Microphones. Microphones, 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 microphones. There's different types of microphones, believe it or not. No, you don't say. Uh, what I like to use is an XLR microphone. Uh, this is the one I started with. It's a um, Audio Technica AT2020. It's a really good microphone for starting out, and it is an XLR microphone. This particular one I do believe is available in USB format, but we're going to get there in a minute. Right now we're doing XLR, so pump the brakes, okay? XLR means it's got these kind of cables on them. So you got that part there, and then you get another cable. It's got that part there. And they go together, all right? Now you're thinking, all right, well, I don't have a jack like that on my computer. Well, no, you don't. For an XLR mic, you need what's called an audio interface. That takes the analog signal to a digital signal. So you would plug this in into your audio interface. And then out of your audio interface is going to be a USB cable that will go into your USB port on your computer. All right. Uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is probably one of the most popular audio interfaces, especially among voiceover artists. Uh, I'll show a picture of it here for you to take a look at. The next type of microphone would be a USB microphone, which would be something along the lines of um, like a Yeti. Or you could even find the AT2020 in a USB format, I believe. Uh, those plug straight into your computer, okay? USB input, you plug it in, set yourself up, you're good to go. Um, a lot of people use those. If you're going to ACX, you can get a job. You can book audiobooks with that microphone just as well as you can an XLR. My personal opinion, XLR has a better sound to it. To me, USB microphones tend to have a little bit of a tinny sound. Uh, maybe it just depends on which model you're working with. So that covers microphones, okay? If you, of course, if you get the microphones, especially in XLR, you got to have cable to 
go from the mic to the interface, and it's a good idea to have a um, mic stand. Um, they sell the little ones like you see for the DJ radios that mount to your desktop and such. Uh, as long as you have a shock mount on there, which keeps the microphone from moving if you bump the table or whatever. Um, you have to have that. Otherwise, if you bump your table, it's going to make a boom sound. Uh, I like having a mic stand separate from my workstation so that if I hit my workstation, I don't have to worry about... I still might have even made noise. I don't know. I don't think it hit the microphone, but anyway. Um, something to hold your microphone, mic stand. Uh, next, computer. Well, almost any computer nowadays is probably going to work for like Audacity or something. We haven't gotten there yet. But most DAWs, uh, especially kind of lower level ones, you can get away with like four gigabytes of RAM and just some sort of graphics card. It's not as intensive as video is. But you will have to check on your DAW uh, specifications of what it requires. We're going to go ahead and move on to DAWs. My particular favorite is Audacity. It is 100% free. All right, zero money. Out the door, it's yours, download it, bada bing, bada boom, all right? Um, I started out with that, and I still use it predominantly for most of the work that I do. I learned how to edit in it, so my editing is just way faster. I need to become a little bit more knowledgeable with the other ones that I have, but uh, it's, still, it's still my preferred one. Uh, Reaper's really popular, Adobe Audition, um, Sony Music Maker, and there's some others, but those are the ones that I've used um, personally. So just if you decide on a DAW, like Audacity, for example, just check the specifications and make sure your computer can handle it and you're good to go. Uh, one other thing you want to do is you want to check in the, to hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. Because if you want to learn more about voiceover, that's kind of one of the things that this channel is going to be covering. All right. So this covered equipment did not cover technique how to audition what the heck acx even is none of that just what do you need to make a decent voiceover or narration that equipment is what you need okay and headphones are optional i would say get some um you can monitor yourself while you record or while you're editing you can hear if you don't have a you know decent space with some decent speakers while you're editing you may want to check out some headphones if you also have other questions about voiceover auditioning for audiobooks um, anything that you might want to know please leave it in the comments and if i haven't done a video on it by the time i read it i will try to get a video um, up for that as long as it's something i'm knowledgeable enough to answer all right thanks for joining us and good luck on your auditions